Focusrite has been tracking travel startups for 15 years now. At this point, we have over 4,600 companies in our travel startup database. We rely on this database to write our annual reports on the state of travel startups and funding, and the database is online for our research clients to be able to browse and filter and look at trends for themselves. So from this deep data set, I'll be presenting some insights on the fundraising environment, as well as some thoughts about how startups, but really all travel companies, may want to be thinking about AI. So in this analysis, we'll be looking primarily at global funding over the past decade, meaning to companies that were founded any time but have raised money since 2014. So mainly startups, but including older companies that are still actively raising money. So this is an analysis of just over 2,900 companies um, out of the 4,600 that we track. These companies have raised $89.1 billion in publicly disclosed funding since 2014. And a couple of quick important notes uh, per the asterisk, I excluded from the data set unicorn companies that have raised more than $4 billion. So that would be Uber, Didi, Grab, Airbnb, because their huge amount of funding just totally skews the analysis. And then the total dollar amount shown here excludes funding um, or money raised in acquisitions, IPOs, as well as post-IPO funding rounds. And the data is current through May of 2024. So in looking at funding activity over time, dollars invested had previously peaked in 2018 at $11.9 billion. Um, that was primarily driven by a flurry of investment into mobility companies. Funding dipped into 2019 and 2020. 2021, though, was a record-breaking year at $16.4 billion. And then 2022 just surpassed 2018 at $12 billion. But 2023 wound up being the weakest year since 2014 at only $4.6 billion. And um, at this time last year, we were at $2.3 billion. But right now, through May, uh, we're at about $1.7 billion. So unless funding really picks up towards the end of the year, it's looking like we could fall back down um, towards where we were in 2014 at $3.2 billion. And these drastic declines would be due to a tough market for exits, particularly IPOs, as well as sky-high valuations, which are now um, causing a hangover, you know, resulting from that period of easy money um, because now valuations are, are dropping and that makes follow-on funding harder to secure. And then another factor is interest rates, which I'll touch on later. Now, looking at funding by region, in the last six years, the landscape has shifted pretty dramatically. Asia Pacific, in the red section, had accounted for 47%, probably in front of it, um, of all funding uh, and investment dollars to travel companies in 2018, but it's been dropping pretty steadily since, and it's now down to 6% in 2024. Meanwhile, North America's share of funding has been shrinking since 2022, that's the purple. While the combination of the Middle East, South America, um, and Africa, in, in the light blue on the top, um, have been rising in recent years. But most notably, Europe, in the darker blue color, second from the top, has the lead this year with 47% share of all funding so far. And this happened last year, around this time, when I presented here. Um, and North America wound up pulling ahead by the end of the year with a higher share. Um, so we'll have to see how it plays out this year. But in 2024, funding for Europe-based companies includes recent rounds of over $100 million to companies in mobility, hospitality, and corporate travel in particular, although a decent chunk of that was uh, debt as opposed to traditional equity rounds. So while funding's down overall, the picture, you know, the news is slightly better for European travel companies who are looking to raise money. This chart shows the share of global funding rounds as opposed to we were looking at dollars. So this is the share of the number of funding rounds that went to B2C oriented companies versus B2B companies. And it's obvious that the B2B uh, share of funding in blue is rising steadily over time. And for the first time this year, as of right now, as of May, um, we've hit a 50-50 ratio. And that's up from B2B rounds being at a third a decade ago. So my quick take on this is it's because there are increasingly entrenched and well-funded market leaders in most consumer travel categories at this point. Now here we're looking at some of the top funded verticals or industry categories and compare where within the industry uh, funding has gone in just the last 21 months since the start of 2023 as opposed to the last decade. So uh, last 21 months in blue, last decade in red. This is an effort to see how funding is shifting recently. 
So the most uh, obvious is the recent strength of the ride-hailing, short-term rental, and other verticals. The ride-hailing vertical is the biggest beneficiary of funding that's taken place so far in 2014, with almost 500 million raised this year. Although, as I alluded, some of that was driven by debt taken on, um, specifically by mo uh, European mobility companies currently in growth mode. Short-term rentals has seen a flurry of investment activity in recent years with many rounds in the tens of millions of dollars, particularly in North America and Europe. And the other vertical is interesting because it captures funding to companies that don't fit traditional verticals. So that shows how funding is diversifying more recently. Corporate tours and air are all up while hotel is kind of flat. And then we see a big cooling off in uh, bike and scooter as well as taxi hailing and the OTA category recently. Now horizontals are business model and technology related categories that we track. Here we're showing that the booking category in the dark red at the bottom, which captures all uh, transaction oriented com uh, companies on both the B2C and B2B sides, but is kind of skewed towards B2C. Um, is losing steam over time, being down from 74% of all funding in 2018 to 38% as of this year, as of May. And it's being displaced by an increased diversity of funding into horizontals that fit more on that B2B side, like software as a service and platform as a service, manufacturers, payments, um, and artificial intelligence and data, as investors are seeking burgeoning opportunities in more fertile ground. The all other categories is the light blue on the top, and that refers here to all of the other horizontal categories that we track combined, about 30 other categories. And similar to verticals, we see that diversification into more categories happening really since 2021. And then the AI and data category, second from the top in the dark blue. Funding's been steady in you know, the last few years, but uh, still not taking off yet due to the rise of generative AI. But as we're talking about throughout this whole conference, AI will have a huge impact on the travel industry in the long term. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what AI might mean for funding and startups specifically, and mainly referring to generative AI here. So here are a few things that I'm thinking about. The first is simply how the world could change in the next five to 10 years, because our data shows that the average time to acquisition in travel is 6.6 years. You would think that might be a little longer, but there are a lot of kind of small aqua hires in travel. Um, but there are plenty of cases where acquisitions took 10, 15, 20 years. So when thinking about an exit, um, you have to, uh, entrepreneurs obviously have to plan far ahead, but planning is becoming increasingly difficult as AI has the potential to be so disruptive in the coming years. The CEO of NVIDIA recently said something that stuck with me. He said, we're headed toward a world and a future where all code will essentially be API calls to large language models, with those LLMs in turn calling other LLMs. And I hear a lot about how the most exciting startups these days are LLM native. So LLMs really could become truly core infrastructure. And companies, and I think especially startups without technical baggage, should be thinking carefully about how they would build for that world if they're not already. But I wanted to run through a few examples of how the world's already changing, or likely will soon. And first, it's becoming clear that the, ver the very nature of advertising and discoverability likely will drastically change, with AI answers and AI overviews taking precedence in search engines, as punctuated by Google's announcement in May. And this could dramatically upend the marketing funnel. So for smaller companies in growth mode, they may not be able to rely on search and traffic as much as they used to, uh, whether organic or paid. So there are implications for companies of all sizes, but particularly startups, I think, need to think more creatively about their customer acquisition strategy, and then if they're fundraising, be able to convince investors of their strategy before anyone really knows how all of this is going to play out. And these changes will have the most drastic potential effect on purely digital information-based businesses. As an example, this headline from Adweek really highlights the perceived imminent threat to publishers with a potential $2 billion annual ad revenue loss from that loss of traffic. And then for businesses that are doing anything in consumer travel search and planning, Google's Gemini is becoming a particularly good tool for planning travel, allowing now a natural language conversation while allowing users to directly interface with their Gmail for their reservation information, 
um, their Google Docs where they might be scribbling ideas on, on you know, their travel plans. Google's flights and hotels products are directly integrated, as well as Google Maps and YouTube. And these are all products that people use frequently for travel planning. So Google has some pretty serious issues with their LLM, and their business model may be under pressure because of all these changes and how advertising will change. But Gemini looks like it will work very well for travel and thus could capture an even larger share of travel planning and shopping traffic and keep it in Google's environment. And of course, a month ago, they announced even more robust uh, trip planning capabilities that are coming soon. Then looking a little bit further out, we have to think about what the very latest fundamental innovations in AI will mean. And of specific importance are the recently launched omnimodal models like GPT-40 and Google's project Astra, because these advancements make interactions with AI that much more naturally conversational with very low latency. And uh, I think a really interesting example is how Meta recently integrated their AI assistant into their web and app properties, as well as the Ray-Ban sunglasses. So you can now ask your Meta AI assistant built into your sunglasses to help give you a guided tour of wherever you are, or just ask for any kind of destination advice, or have a real-time translated conversation. And I think these are the types of scenarios that companies providing services on the ground need to think carefully about. And I'd say specifically how much their younger customers might embrace AI options like this versus uh, those with a, human, a more human connection. And then autonomous agents are starting to roll out, which are digital assistants that can not only give us information, but go out and do things for us, including helping with shopping and making comparisons. And we should get a good sense of how these will work when GPT-5 rolls out, uh, probably later this year. But these agents raise really big questions about how the shopping and booking process could change and who it will affect. So some of the visions for these represent a near total upheaval of the shopping and buying process. So one vision is that we would each have our own personal autonomous agents, AI agents, that would broadcast our needs to the market. They would interact with agents from sellers, and the agents would sort of negotiate, and your agent would make sure you got the best deal that fully meets your specified needs. So I think everyone in commerce has to give some thought to, no matter how far-fetched it might seem, how would your business operate in that type of world? And how would you build for that world? And it's very hard to say yet if this vision would benefit startups or incumbents more. On the B2B side, autonomous agents like GPTs and co-pilots will increasingly automate workflows and processes. And companies are already starting to build synthetic employees. So companies providing B2B services have to think carefully about whether they're doing something that a machine really won't be able to do, whether it's business tasks like data analysis, um, or planning an offsite meeting, or finding the right social influencer to work with, et cetera, et cetera. Um, on the other hand, startups could potentially be spun up with very little overhead between tech resources and running partially automated with an army of synthetic employees and that has its own mind-boggling implications, including for funding and how much money startups will need going forward. So to me, the bottom line <clears throat> with AI is that eventually tech will no longer be a competitive moat because people will likely to be able to build a lot of things that they need just using natural language. Thus, proprietary data that nobody else can replicate could become the most important business asset followed by a superior user experience and strong brand recognition. So those are some AI-related things that entrepreneurs in particular need to think about when fundraising and planning for the future. And of course, they obviously have to keep in mind how difficult the fundraising environment currently is. So this is an article from the end of 2023 highlighting how even for AI startups, it was much harder out there than even a year before. And it specifically mentions that investors are worried about increased competition from tech giants like Meta and OpenAI. One caveat on this, I am hearing that for startups who are working on autonomous agents, fundraising is actually quite strong, but that's not too common in travel yet. And then here's a very telling statistic. Uh, a recent analysis showed that half the number of traditional VCs in US venture capital deals were active in 2023 versus 2021 at the height of the funding frenzy, and I have to assume that the picture is similar for Europe. And a big reason for that could be interest rates. Um, with them being higher than they've been in a long time, 
You know, investors have a lower risk appetite for venture capital when they can get a good return on their money in safer investments like treasuries. So it has a big effect. So this might be sounding a bit daunting between all the uncertainty of AI and the funding drought, but there's always some good news, so I'm very happy to share that. And I think firstly, periods of intense disruption have always proven to be the time of maximum opportunity. So entrepreneurs have to look at it that way, but it's up to them to figure out you know, exactly where those opportunities are right now. And then even though there are signs of consumer spending weakening, travel demand still holding up relatively well. I think the pandemic really did seem to make people appreciate travel more than ever, and I think that does boost investor confidence in the industry. But best of all, multiple investors who haven't raised funds in a while, but used to do so practically yearly, have done so this year, and many of them are focused on early stage startups. So a couple of notable examples, Excel hadn't raised a fund uh, since 2021, but just closed 650 million in May, and Lakestar hadn't raised a fund since 2019, but just closed early stage and growth funds. And we'll talk to Christoph about that in just a minute. So thank you, I hope this presentation gave everyone a lot to think about. Uh, please scan this QR code to go directly to our startup and funding research. And next, I will be joined on stage by some of Europe's top investors to hear their views on the state of travel startups and funding, as well as how they are thinking about AI. Thank you. <laughs>